What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, we're going to go through some of the stuff that we've learned during preseason. So I'm going to take you through some of the lineups for the final preseason games and then just some other notes I've made as well. So if you enjoy this video and find it useful, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button. And because we're only a few days away now from the game week one deadline, this is the perfect time to sign up to Fantasy Football Hub. There is 50% off at the moment. If you sign up and don't win your mini league, you will get your money back. Terms and conditions apply. All the links you need are in the description below. So let's start with Liverpool's lineup against Sevilla. Now it is worth noting they've got another friendly straight after this one, so two on the same day. And at the time of recording, I've seen the lineup for the second game and not yet seen the results and the minutes and stuff like that. But judging by the 11 that started against Sevilla, that looks pretty first choice to me. There might be some players that get changed before the Ipswich game, and certainly longer term that will happen. But I would expect the majority of the 11 players that, uh, that lined up against Sevilla to start against Ipswich. So you've got Allison in goal. That's a certainty. We know that. Trent started at right back and Bradley is starting the second game, uh, presumably at right back as well. There was speculation earlier on during preseason that maybe Bradley could start right back and Trent could play in midfield. I just don't think we should expect that to happen. One thing, Trent has just never played that position regularly. Liverpool have a lot of central midfielders as well. And obviously, there's rumours that they might go and buy Zuba Mendy too. And if that happens, I just don't see how Trent fits in. And then the likes of McAllister, Sabos, I just aren't getting as many minutes. So Trent starting right back, to me, seems like a certainty. And he probably is going to continue to be the most attacking, for, uh, sorry, attacking defender for Liverpool. In terms of the centre-back partnership, it was Van Dijk and Kwanzaa. Canate hasn't played as many preseason games as Kwanzaa, partly because obviously he was away with France for the Euros. It does look likely that Kwanzaa's going to start the season at 4.5 million. Now, as a short-term move, I don't particularly hate that. In fact, I quite like it, to be honest. If you want to take that punt on Kwanzaa for such a cheap price, I think that's a good move. Long-term, will he definitely keep his place? Nobody really knows. And even if he is the first-choice centre-back, it could be that Kanate comes in for some games. But from reading up and listening to stuff around Liverpool, Slot wants to build up from the back, control possession... And Kwanzaa in possession is probably better than Kanate. It doesn't mean he's a better defender overall, but he might give Slot more of what he wants from that position. So if you want to punt on a 4.5 million Liverpool defender, Kwanzaa is definitely the one. Should you go for him instead of Trent or instead of Van Dijk? I think if you're certain that you want a Liverpool defender because of the fixtures, I would just pay the premium to get someone that's nailed. But as a second option or just a cheap punt, I think Kwanzaa's pretty good. Whether or not you're wildcarding early, I think if he's like a fifth defender, maybe even a fourth defender in your squad, I think it's a decent pickup for 4.5. I may even go there myself. Simakas started left back. Robertson started in the second game. Robertson has had a bit of an injury to deal with during preseason. Simakas might start in game week one, but long term, we know that's going to be Robertson's position, so I would just ignore both of them, I would say. Midfield with Saboslai, Gravenberch, and McAllister. There might be some changes there for Ipswich, but not guaranteed. Saboslai might be a good option at 6.5, but I think unless we see him play advanced regularly with no one else playing in that role, I, I just think it's a wait and see for me. I think there's better 6.5s out there. And then the front three was Salah. We know he's going to start. I'm not going to talk any more about him. Jota was the number nine, and Diaz on the left. Jota scored, Diaz scored twice. I think that is what will, the, the front three that will start against Ipswich. I don't think it necessarily means that Jota is the preferred number nine. Nunez is starting the second game. We know he was back much later. Jota has now played three preseason games, so he might get game weeks one, two, possibly even three as well. But after that long time, I just, I just don't think anyone truly knows. Like Even Liverpool fans can guess, but until they see more games under slot, like it's impossible to say for sure. And I think for a lot of teams, especially with those that have had players away on international duty, there is going to be some uncertainty until we get past that international break. So teams have had three matches, everyone's back up to fitness, and then we can see what the manager prefers. And obviously, Slot hasn't had a huge amount of time with his whole squad either. So as a short-term punt, Jota playing number nine, listed as a 7.5 million midfielder, really like him. How many game weeks are you going to get out of him being first choice in the eleven? I just don't know. That is the honest answer. But with Ipswich up first, I like it as a punt. And I think this is like a separate point to Liverpool. But if most of your picks are just solid 
safe options that are going to start every week. The odd punt here or there is not a bad thing at all. And if you want that to be Jota or even Luis Diaz, that can work. With Diaz, he's also the same price and listed as a midfielder. There's been speculation that he might leave. That could still happen. The transfer window's open up until that international break. It might be that when Gappo's back and starting regularly that Slot prefers him. Again, we just don't know. And I think we have to be honest about that. But if you want to take a punt on this Liverpool team, Kwanzaa for 4.5, Jota and Diaz at 7.5 million midfielders, they look like the ones. So Man City's lineup in the Community Shield was definitely not full strength. They had Edison in goal, which is fairly standard. The back four wasn't too bad either. Rico Lewis right back, Akanji Diaz centre backs, and then Vardio at left back. The central midfield was Aridi, Kovacic and McAtee. And then the front three was Oscar Bob, Haaland and Doku. Now I'm going to be completely honest, I haven't watched this game in full. I've only seen the highlights. I know I'm a terrible Man United fan, but I chose to watch my son play football in his cup match instead which i think was the right choice um but judging from the highlights i've seen and reading up on it Vardio probably wasn't as attacking as we saw at the back end of last season it doesn't mean that can't happen in some easier matches like ipswich at home game week two for example or just in general over the first few games for man city but perhaps we should temper our expectations with him a little bit but he is going to start the season and i think compared to the center backs he's only 0.5 million more he's probably worth that extra money in the hope you do get some of those attacking returns. Rico Lewis is interesting because I believe he is only 4.5 million. I'm just going to double check that. He is, yeah. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts the first few games because he's had a full preseason and Kyle Walker hasn't. But again, it's just one of those picks, a little bit like Oscar Bob, who I'm going to talk about in a second. You just don't know how long those run of starts are going to continue for. So I think if you're someone that's on a guaranteed early wild card like in game week four these kind of punts are probably worth it but if you're thinking longer term and you don't want too many of those punts in your team then i'd be a little bit more wary but hearing a 4.5 million defender for man city is kind of tempting i think he probably will start in game week one but after that i get i just don't know and i've got to be honest about that and i think it's similar with oscar bob like i've seen a few comments about you know he's their only real right winger he's just another Cole Palmer right he's a really good player and I think we all know that but Bernardo Silva can play right wing Foden can play there as well like both of those players are going to get minutes eventually Bernardo Silva came on in the final uh, or sorry in the community shield and and Foden it won't be long till he's back in the team as well so Oscar Bob a bit like Ahmad Diallo who we're going to talk about in a minute it's a case of how long will he be in the team for I think if Man City had a better fixture in game week one they'd be a little bit more tempting like, I don't think Chelsea away is horrible, but it's not as nice as it could be. And then, obviously, Ipswich at home is where you really want these players to play. And if you go for the punt and they don't start that game, it's going to feel like a bit of a failure. So, they're not for me, I've got to be honest. But I can see why people are tempted for their price. Doku may well start the season as well, because Grealish had a bit of an injury. But I just think with Man City, we've been here so many times before. They've got options. And I think the first couple of games, we might see a similar team to this. And you could opt to go for one of the centre-backs instead of Vardio. But long-term, again, I don't think anyone can tell you for sure. And we have seen Foden and, and Bernardo Silva line up on the right so many times. Like, who would be completely surprised if in game week two or three, it's not a front three of Bernardo Silva on the right, Foden on the left, and Haaland through the middle? I don't think Foden will play left that often this season, but it's possible he can do it. So, I don't know, he could even come centre, right? And at that point, maybe Vardio does start bombing forward. There's just a few too many unknowns here for me. I like Vardio, and obviously Haaland is a, a pretty much a lock for me. Everyone else I'm probably ignoring. So for Man United, it was Inanna in goal, and then you had Martinez at left back and Dallow at right back, and the centre-back partnership was Johnny Evans and Harry Maguire. And I understand that Yara was injured, and Malassia and Shaw were out, so Martinez has had to play left back. But how Man United are at this point in the season, and they're still lining up with Evans and Maguire as a centre-back partnership, is a little bit of a joke, but anyway, that's probably a conversation for a different video. Then midfield, you had Maynou and Casemiro, and then behind Bruno Fernandes, basically playing as the number nine, it was Rashford on the left, Diallo on the right, and then Mason Mount kind of in and behind. First things first, I would just ignore Man United defence entirely. I don't think the fixtures are that great anyway. I haven't really seen anything to say that defence is going to get massively better this season, although... Apparently, they're still in for Delic from Bayern Munich. It sounds like that is going to go through. And Masrari from there as well. I've probably said that name wrong. 
who can play fullback. I think he's primarily a right back, but can probably fill in at left back as well. So that will improve the Man United defence. But I still think having Casemiro and Mainu in front is just not ideal. Like Casemiro is fine, but he's not going to be able to play the full season. So unless not at the level we need from him anyway, unless Man United can sign another ball winning midfielder, I'm just not expecting the defence to improve that much. I just think you can wait and see. It's not like any of them are super attacking and they're so cheap they're just obvious to go for. I think you just ignore them completely. Maybe a Nana in goal because of save points and stuff like that. I'd ignore it otherwise. Um, look, Rashford, if you want to go for him, great. Seven million. I think he'll start enough. The one I really want to talk about is Ahmad Diallo. Five million. So a little bit like Oscar Bob. Lots of people are tempted to go for him. And he's been talked up during preseason, played really well too. I just don't think you can guarantee the minutes. Like, would anyone be surprised if Rashford plays on the left and Garnacho right in game week one? I just wouldn't be. And that is the problem. Even if Amadiado starts in game week one, you just don't know how many games afterwards you're getting from him. I hate to keep saying that, but that is the truth. And look, if you've got, if you want to go for him instead of a Rogers. Uh, or a Winks is a bit of a punt, and most of the time you're not going to play him. You're just going to hope that he keeps his place. Fair enough. But I certainly would not have someone like that as like my fourth midfielder that I've got to play every week. I I'm expecting Garnacho to play. He came on. He's not obviously had a preseason because he was away for Copper America. I think he could start in game week one, and I would not be confident that Rashford is getting dropped, despite that being what fans might want, or some fans, and they want Diallo to start. It's just not a guarantee. And as much as he's been talked up, it doesn't mean that he's suddenly going to play every single game. So fair enough. One week punt, 5 million against Fulham at home. Not terrible, absolutely. And by the way, it could be that Fernandez plays instead of Mason Mount and Rashford goes through the middle. But Ten Hag has spoken a lot about Rashford being best off the left. And I think we all know that as well. So I'm not sure I see that. So yeah, I, I would probably ignore Diallo personally. So it wasn't just Arsenal's final lineup that was familiar, but also the result as well. They won. It was two goals for them, both actually from a set piece as well, which I come on to, and they kept a clean sheet. So fairly standard stuff. In terms of the lineup, David Raya in goal, back four of Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel, and Zinchenko. We've seen that plenty of times before. Midfield was Odegaard, Party, and Declan Rice. And then the front three was Saka, Havertz, and Martinelli. So a few things to talk about here. First up, Havertz got the nod as the number nine. Maybe we should have been expecting that. But Gabriel Jesus has played well in that position during preseason. For me, Gabriel Jesus is just a no-go. The minutes are not strong enough. Havertz is fine. If you want to go for him at 8 million, I don't think he's a terrible pick whatsoever. I like the fixtures for Arsenal from an attacking point of view. I still think the likes of Izak for 0.5 are probably better. Maybe even Solanke for 0.5 less at Spurs. Uh, obviously, people like Watkins, although I'm going to come on to him in a minute. Haaland, etc. Jao Pedro started. Uh, so there's lots of options in that forward line. But if you've been kind of pro habits for a long time now, there's no reason not to start with him. Martinelli on the left. Again, maybe we should have been expecting that. But I still think like 7 million is a good price, right? It's 1.5 less than Odegaard, you know, much less than Saka as well. Could trust our player at some point in Jesus. It's possible. I. I feel like Martinelli could be a headache. He's definitely got the potential to be a massive differential and a good value option, but we didn't see a great deal from him last year. And if that happens again from the start, like Arteta does have other players that can play in that position. So I'd probably avoid Martinelli, but I can kind of see why people might be looking at him. Uh, in terms of the defense, Calafori was on the bench. He came on uh, later on in the match. I don't expect Zinchenko to start very often this season i would probably just ignore him even though his price is kind of tempting the funny thing is i i said yet on yesterday's video that i'd probably back against saliba because gabriel's got more goal for it and then saliba scored and i thought that is uh, like completely typical for one of my fpl videos but then gabriel scored later on as well and they are just very good from set pieces declan rice got the assist for both of those goals i'd still ignore him personally i think there's three better arsenal picks almost certainly and for 6.5 million midfielder i'd rather go elsewhere but the Arsenal centre-backs are decent. It, it just depends whether you can rotate them out for those more tricky games. Because Wolves are, uh, and Brighton at home game, it's one and three are fine. But Villa, Spurs, Man City away, just not going to be easy clean sheets there. But because they've got the goal threat as well, it's not... If you want to go for an Arsenal defender, I think they're fine picks. I may end up with one as well. 
I still think long term there's question marks over Gabriel, or at least a little bit more uncertainty than there was last year. But he's going to start the season almost certainly. And Timber had a bit of a foot issue. I don't think it's major, but he wasn't even in the squad, so he's not really a worry right now. And I think if Kanafori comes in, it'll be for Zinchenko most of the time. And so I think Gabriel to start the season, you're probably good. Just quickly on Ben White, because I've had a lot of comments saying, why aren't you mentioning him, the disrespect? I just don't think he's worth 6.5 million. I'd rather pay 0.5 more for Trent or just spend 0.5 less on Gabriel or Saliba. Like, he's attacking enough, but he's not like a Trent or a Porro or someone like that. And obviously, you get the Arsenal clean sheets on top, but you can get them from cheaper players. So I've got nothing against Ben White. It's not personal. He's just not how I would spend 6.5 million in FPL for game week one. So for Chelsea, it was Robert Sanchez that started the final preseason game. So presumably he's going to be their number one goalkeeper going into the season. There is still part of me tempted to put him in my squad. Because even though defensively Chelsea haven't been great during preseason, I feel like with the players they've got, clean sheets are surely going to come, right? There's too many quality players there to not pick up clean sheets along the way. I just feel like with the amount of goalkeeper options they've got and the fact they've bought in Jorgensen as well... Like they could just swap that position at any point. I just don't know if it's worth the headache. But if you do want Chelsea's number one, it looks like it's going to be Sanchez. Back four, Gusto, Fafana, Colwell, and Kukure. I think we can expect Kukure to be first choice left back. With Gusto, he's almost certainly behind Reese James in the pecking order. But James is not only suspended to start the season, but he has picked up another hamstring injury. It is just getting sad at this point. I really hope at some stage this season he can pull through and get a massive run of games, right? Because he's too good of a player to not, you know, play, essentially. But for FPL purposes, he's just not available. And we know what he's like. They don't like to rush him back. It could be a while until we see him play. And Gusto is a perfectly good replacement. We have seen him pick up a few injuries last season. But if you wanted to go for one of their fullbacks, Gusto is probably the one. I just don't know for 5 million if I completely can get behind that. I think for 4.5, maybe... There's a few fixtures in their opening seven, like Forest at home in game week seven, Palace at home in game week three. A few of the away games are okay. Wolves away, Bournemouth away. I just don't know if there's enough there for me to pick one of their actual defenders. But Gusto would probably be the one. Um, for Fana and Cole, I'm just going to double check. I think they're both uh, 4.5. I've got to find Fana on the list. Yeah, they're both 4.5. Uh, I think most people expected Colwell to get a place in that team. Again, he's just too good to leave out. But they have got a lot of centre packs. And for Fana, always gets injuries as well. I think if I was going to go for one, it would be Colwell. If I'm going for a defender, Colwell at 4.5. Gusto, if I've got money to burn, then maybe Sanchez in goal. Um, the rest of the team was uh, Enzo, Lavia. I think Lavia's played a lot during preseason, by the way. Madueki, Dewsbury Hall, Mudrick, and then uh, Gui. Gay up front. Gui, I've probably pronounced that wrong. He's not going to start anyway. Jackson, Palmer, and Kunku all on the bench. I think all three of those will come in for game week one. Palmer and Nkunku came on at halftime. I think Jackson's come on as well. I think they're all starting against Man City. Nkunku's played a lot during preseason as well. So it might have just been they wanted to give him a little bit of a rest before that first game. So I wouldn't expect... I think Palmer will come in for Madueke. Nkunku will come in for Dewsbury Hall. It'll probably be Sterling instead of Mudrick unless they want to start Neto straight away. And then Jackson will come in up front. Just quickly on Neto, he's only 6.5 million. Again, is he going to come straight into the team? I just don't know. Sterling's played pretty well through preseason, so it's not a guarantee. I think you either pay the premium for Palmer or you go for Nkunku instead. So for Crystal Palace, Dean Henderson is definitely going to be their number one goalkeeper. Apparently, Sam Johnson has been told he's allowed to look for another club. I just don't think he's happy about not being the number one and not getting enough game time. So that's why he wants to leave. And if you want to go for the four and a half, four million combination, uh, Matthews at Crystal Palace is their backup goalkeeper unless they sign someone else and he's four million. So that is a combination you could go for. Remember the transfer window is still open for a few weeks so they might go and get someone. I'd also be careful about not blocking three spots for Palace. Like if you go for Henderson, there is a chance you might want two other players at some point. So given that Henderson will always play, you could just go for a four million goalkeeper from uh, another team. Back three was Richards, Anderson, and Gay. So Gay's still playing. There was obviously that rumour that Newcastle were interested. Whether they're going to meet the price to entice him away from Crystal Palace, we don't know. He could still leave before the end of the window. Then Mitchell and Munoz were the wing-backs. I think Munoz has kind of been forgotten about a little bit. He is their most attacking 
defender. And five million is not that bad of a price, I would say, for what he potentially offers. Even if Gay goes, I think the Crystal Palace defense will be pretty decent. I think it's just what I said early on in preseason that when people start trying to fit other players in, they look for routes to downgrade. And Munoz to Anderson is one of those. But I think if you want a more attacking player in that Crystal Palace lineup, Munoz is the one. Uh, Wharton and Hughes were in midfield, not really FPL options. And then the front three, or the two behind Edouard, were Kamada and Eze, and then it was Edouard up front. Mateta has been away with France at the Olympics. He will come back into the team when he's available. When will that be? I'm not sure yet. I just wouldn't start with him in game week one. Eze has started now. That's his first preseason start. I think he's going to play in game week one. I'd be very surprised. Like He's one of their best players. They're not going to leave him out. And then Kamada, if you want a 5.5 million midfielder, could be the one. They have other players that can play in that role. Like AU could play there as well. But it looks pretty likely that Kamada will start the season. And look, I, I can't... I don't know that much about him, right? And obviously, we haven't seen him in a Crystal Palace shirt in a Premier League season yet. And I feel like this with a lot of the 5.5s, there's a ton of options. One of them is going to be really good. I just don't know who that is right now. And with the fixtures that Palace have got, it might be Kamada. And he's played well under Glasner before. Again, I think I think he comes under, for me, the, the point of view that if you wanted him to be your... If he was the one that you'd earmarked as your 5.5 million midfielder, th there's no reason to bet against that. Like, none of the others are put in a claim where they are definitely the best. Smith Rowe could be brilliant. Minter at uh, Brighton could be brilliant, right? I'm not going to run through the whole list of 5.5 million midfielders. We'd be here all day. But there isn't one where I would strongly argue they are the best. Like, for 6.5 million midfielders, I'm confident enough that Nkunku will probably be one of the best options. 5.5s, I'm just not that sure. I may end up on Smith Row, but Kamada could be nice at Palace. I think we have to remember that, yes, they've lost Elise, right? We've been through this many times during preseason, but they look really good under Glasner. And one player dropping out does not necessarily just crash a whole team's attacking output. And if their output's going to continue, then Kamada's going to have a, a piece of the pie, essentially, in getting goals and assists. So I think if you wanted to go for him instead of an Eze or as well, you've just got a 5.5 slot. It looks good. So for Fulham, it was Meniz again that started as the number nine. I think it's pretty clear that he is the first choice for them. Rao Jimenez came on in the 81st minute, so he's going to get a bit of game time off the bench, but I don't think we should expect to see him start ahead of Meniz anytime soon. So for six million and the fixtures that Fulham have got, Meniz is a solid option in that forward line. Some people have asked me whether he's going to be on penalties or there's any chance that he could take them. I would say that's really unlikely. During pre-season, he won a penalty and he didn't even take it. It was Lukic that took it because Andreas wasn't on the pitch. So Meniz getting penalties, it just doesn't look uh, that likely. Smith Rowe started again. Uh, he came off for Kearney in the 81st minute. Smith Rowe almost certainly going to start the season. Again, obviously Fulham's fixture is very good. I like him at 5.5. And because there's not another penalty taking 5.5 that's also super attacking and guaranteed minutes, Smith Rowe is becoming one of my favorites. I think just having Leicester at home and it switch away in game weeks two and three m may even be the, the decider. Like Minter at Brighton, I really like as well, but the fixtures just aren't quite so good until you get to like game week four. So Smith Rowe looks pretty certain for a start. Like, is he absolutely nailed to start every single game? I don't know if we can say that right now, but I wouldn't be surprised if it happens if he can keep himself fit. Andreas Pereira started again, but I think he was a little bit deeper. He's probably someone I'm probably going to ignore. But the fact he's on penalties, if he stays, he's still a good option. But I think for Fulham, I just prefer to go to Smith Rowe instead. Robinson is definitely the, the defender of choice if you're going to go for one. Castagna didn't start. It was Tete at right back. Castagna came on in the 81st minute. I don't think that necessarily means that Castagna won't start. But there's too much uncertainty there to even bother. Whereas Robinson's got less competition. So Muneer's good. Smith Rowe good. Andreas Pereira not bad. Leno for 5 million in goal, I just wouldn't go for. I think it's too expensive. Robinson's the defender if you want to go for someone for Fulham. So for Brighton, it was stealing goal, but it's almost certainly going to be Verbruggen as their number one. He's just not fit at the moment. So I'd ignore their goalkeepers completely. The back four was Barco at left back, Veltman at right back, and then Dunk and Van Heck as centre backs. The only two I look at there is probably Barco because he's 4 million, and then Dunk as a rotation option for game weeks four and five, who should be nailed on, does have some goal threat as well. And to be honest with you, most people are not going to look at Dunk, and I fully get it because the fixtures before game week four aren't great, and the fixtures after game week five aren't great for clean sheets either. 
But Ipswich at home game week four and Forest at home game week five could be useful because Porro, who's very popular, has Arsenal at home in game week four. So you could potentially play your Brighton defender instead. And if you're looking at an Arsenal defender, they've got Spurs away in game week four and Man City away in game week five. So if you wanted to bench them and play someone else, Dunk could be an option. That's the only real reason I would look at him. And then Barco at 4 million is just potentially very good value. Estupinian could come back in at some point, but he's injured until September. The last thing I heard said that he might even be out until October. Not a guarantee, but that would mean even more matches that Barco could play. They are looking at this guy from Fenerbahce, Kodolo, or something like that. I've, I've probably pronounced that wrong. I apologize. He... He can play in a variety of positions. If you look him up on transfer market, he's basically played absolutely everywhere. He could get minutes of left back. I don't know if that's why Brighton uh, are bringing him in, but it is a possibility. He, to me, it looks just like Pascal Gross, that he can just play in any position you want him to. Maybe that puts a little bit more uncertainty on Barco, but I keep coming back to the fact he's only 4 million. The potential upside is there, especially if he's going to take some set pieces and be attacking, that maybe... Given that the other four million defenders aren't particularly defensively sound or mega attacking, like Barker could just be the one if you don't have to rely on him that often. And if he is playing in game weeks four and five, then you've got that cover for the Arsenal and Spurs defenders anyway. Elsewhere, for FPL relevance, Matoma started. He hasn't been talked about that much, 6.5 million. I don't think the fixtures are good enough to warrant going for him over other 6.5s, but we've seen how good he can be in FPL before. And I think Everton away, Man United at home first. Uh, sorry, Everton away game week one. Uh, yeah, Man United at home game week two. And not that bad. But Arsenal away game week three is tough. João Pedro started 5.5 million. That's put a spanner in the works for me because I was not hoping that he wasn't fit, but it would have made my decisions easier. I would have probably just gone for Isaac, Haaland and Solanke. But Pedro at 5.5 is potentially incredible value. And I just think that he will start. And I'm, and I'm not sure we should expect as much rotation as we saw under De Zerbi. So I think Jao Pedro is really hard to overlook. Danny Welbeck did take the penalty. That's his second of preseason. But Jao Pedro wasn't on the pitch for either of them. So I would expect Jao Pedro to keep penalties. Like Jao Pedro scored like 13 or 14 and missed one. Welbeck scored three and missed one, like in his career in competitive games. So I think Jao Pedro will keep them. Just quickly on Welbeck. He is, let me just check here, five and a half. I just can't see how you buy him over João Pedro. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and then Minter, again, I've already spoken about 5.5 million midfielders. I think there's a lot of excitement around this guy. Um, whether he can deliver that at Premier League level, we'll have to wait and see. But again, if you, if you just like the look of him at five and a half, I think he's good. I think he's going to start the season as first choice on the right. And then if he's good enough, he could keep his place. Is that guaranteed? Of course not, right? We don't know what Hertz is going to do long term. We don't have that, you know, historical data to back up how he's going to play, how many sub early subs he's going to make. Is he going to rotate his squad and stuff like that? Not at Brighton anyway. But I, I do like Minter. But I think Jao Pedro in attack is the key one. Penalty taking 5.5 million forward. They don't come around very often. If he gets the game time, he'll get the returns. So I just wanted to go through some other preseason notes. So Aston Villa are a team that have added a lot of players to their squad. They've got a bit more depth than they had last season. That's obviously good for them in general when you're trying to compete in the Champions League. But for FPL, I do wonder whether we might see a bit more rotation or just reduced minutes than what we've been used to under Emery. Even players like Ollie Watkins, if there's a Champions League game just around the corner, could we see him get subbed off before the 90th minute, which doesn't usually happen? Possibly. Shouldn't put you off Ollie Watkins as a pick, not on that basis anyway. I'm going to talk about him a little bit more in just a second. You know, Leon Bailey, I expect him to play more because Diaby's gone. I think he'll have to. But in the past, he's been managed to make sure that he doesn't pick up an injury and stuff like that. And that could happen with these midweek games in the Champions League. So I guess the point is not to ignore Aston Villa players, but to be a little bit more conscious about the, the slight risk that's there. Same with Rodgers at 5 million, although at his price, he could just be worth the pun on ollie watkins though he's had no preseason minutes he wasn't involved for aston villa's final game i did try to look up whether there was any issues there with injuries i couldn't see anything so he's probably fine to start the season if emery says he's available i would expect him to start game week one just because he always does but no preseason minutes i think is a little bit of a worry like would it be a massive shock if watkins 
didn't start game week one and came off the bench, ready for then the Arsenal game in game week two, it maybe be a little bit of a shock because it's Watkins, right? And he always plays. But no preseason minutes, I think, is a little bit of a concern. So keep an eye on that. And any updates we get ahead of the deadline, I'll cover that in other videos. Uh, Carvalho looks to be loaned from Liverpool to Brentford. So we might have another £5 million midfielder to add to the list alongside Rodgers. Not sure whether he's going to start straight away. But presumably, he's gone because he wants more minutes and, and he's, he's got that assurity. So I don't know if he goes straight into that Brentford team. I don't know if he then plays every single game. But it's one to keep an eye on. Uh, Branthway at Everton, just in case any of you were considering him, he might miss the start of the season, possibly just the first game, but not worth going for. Right? I'd probably try and pick up uh, someone a bit cheaper instead. Vardy has had an injury during preseason. Daka looks to pick, have picked one up as well. I'm not sure how bad it is, but Leicester are looking lightweight up front. And I wonder whether Mavidi could take penalties as well. He has taken one or two for Leicester before. I think Vardy and Daka might be ahead of him in the pecking order. But if they're not on the pitch, possibly... There's a 5.5 million penalty taking midfielder. Long term, probably not, and not even guaranteed now. But it's getting more and more likely with those two players injured. It also doesn't obviously help for their attacking output. So anyone looking at Spurs defenders game week one, that's probably a bit of a bonus. Just on the 5.5 million penalty taking midfielders, Cliver also took one for Bournemouth in their final preseason game. Uh, and obviously Solanke's gone, so someone else has to take penalties. I'm going to assume that Bournemouth are going to spend the money on another forward. I don't think you get six point, uh, six, 65 million or, or whatever it was around there. Lose like one of your best players and not replace them in some way. So who's definitely going to take penalties longer term? We don't know. Like Semenyo, for example, could play centrally if he nails out. Um, but Clivert took one, so I think it's just worth noting. Lewis Hall, Newcastle fans are convinced he's starting left back the season and it does look pretty likely because um like they haven't signed gay or anyone so dan burns probably going to play left center back so lewis hall could be a nice nice punt without going over old ground too much i'm still not sure i like the fixtures that much for clean sheets apart from game week one but i think lewis hall's got the making of a, a an fpl defender that could be very attacking and again maybe he's worth the punt i, I think for me what i'm trying to do for my own squad is if I'm going for like a Kwanzaa at 4.5 or a Lewis Hall at 4.5, I don't want them to be someone that I, I'm going to be stuck if I can't play them every week. I don't want to be forced into a transfer early on for a 4.5 million defender. So I'm not sure what squad I'm playing about with at the moment. But yeah, I've got like a Poro, Van Dyke, and then three 4.5 million defenders. That probably won't be my final team. But in that setup, maybe I can afford to go for a punt on one of those 4.5s for a Hall or a Kwanzaa. Like, it is tempting because Newcastle got Southampton at home game week one. Great shot at a clean sheet. Maybe they could get one against Bournemouth, Wolves, or Fulham away, who they play in the first five games. But I just think long-term, it doesn't look that good. So I don't know. But also, I think Lewis Hall is definitely just one of those players that could be a great attacking defensive pick in FPL. I don't know. Maybe worth a shot for some of you. Um, and then Bergval at Spurs, 4.5 million midfielder. He's been talked up a lot in preseason by Spurs fans. I think most of them will tell you that he's probably not going to start, but they do think he's good enough that it could happen pretty quick. And I think there are Spurs fans out there that would like him to start ahead of someone like Madison in that central position. So potentially it happens at some point, but he's probably... I mean, you could argue if your 4.5 million midfielder is going to be on your bench all the time anyway, you don't want three other Spurs players, you could start with him. And then if he starts getting minutes, you can start playing him later on. I think it's just one to keep an eye on. I'd almost rather spend 0.5 more and get like a Rodgers or someone like that who probably looks more likely to get minutes early on. Let me know if there's any other stuff we've learned pre, uh, throughout preseason. Anything major that I've missed, I will just cover in other videos. There's plenty to come ahead of the deadline. If you've enjoyed that, give it a like and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check out Fantasy Football Hub using the links in the description below. Great five stars on podcast and I will catch you again tomorrow.